Hey there. We are at the Richland Rum Distillery. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, That's correct. And I was just passing through town and I something said, Carolina Tony, you need to stop. And I did. I've got two new friends and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves to you. All right. I'm Chad Harvey. Um, I'm originally from Jessup, Georgia. I've been here a couple months now. Um, and Richland Rum is the best American rum. That's not a lie. Forbes voted on it, and we're professionals, so we said so too. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I agree. I'm Rick Proto from the town. Been here all my life. Only five minutes down the road. One of the managers here, working with Chad. Great guy, man. Like he said, Richland Rum is the best rum in America. We both agree. Yeah. And not being biased at all. No, you should come and try it. <laughs> Absolutely. And these guys are going to give me a tour, and we're going to find out how this rum is made and a little about the history and all that good stuff and hopefully I won't be staggering out of here. But we'll do all of that right after the station identification. <laughs> Georgia. Right, we've been here 21 years. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. this is the best rum in the world? Best American rum there is. Best American rum there is. That's right. Okay. Um, and so here we have, uh, we grow all our own sugarcane stock. Uh huh. Um, so the sugarcane is grown right here in Georgia? That's right. Cool. That's right. Now, is that what makes rum unique? Is it's done with sugarcane? Yeah, so all rum um, comes from some form of sugarcane. Uh huh. Um, at some point of uh, which you, you use the plant, depending on the level, you have a certain kind of one. Mm -hmm. um, now I have had some rum in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, and I remember that they did sugar cane there. Mm -hmm. Right, and so in the Caribbean, it's real popular to use um, cane juice, which is essentially when you crush the stalk, uh -huh. um, some of the juice comes out. And so that is made specifically um, Usually in the Caribbean, because cane juice itself has a very short shelf life, mm -hmm. and so they can grow it year round, you know. Right. Um, so they can use it just that way. Uh -huh. So usually that's a little bit lighter, a little bit more airy. It's going to be um, a bit wild, a bit funky, uh -huh. um, but great nonetheless as far as being a sipper or or being able uh -huh. to use it in drinks. Now, what would make yours different? Mm -hmm. So with ours, we're actually making it from the sugar cane syrup back in the most authentic way. And uh -huh. so, we're going to take the cane juice and we're going to start boiling it, kind of put it in the back row, the water kind of rises from it, mm -hmm. and we end up with the syrup. Oh. Um, as a matter of fact, if you want to follow, this is going to be some of the sugar cane. Uh -huh. This isn't where we grow it necessarily, right. <laughs> um, because all this is a little dead. Uh -huh. But um, we have a farm about nine miles out from here um, that has about 3,000 acres overall, uh -huh. um, where we grow, um, I think it's, red, purple, and either green or yellow um, sugar cane. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we just got done cutting it down. And so um, we're in the process of, of crushing that to make our cane juice now. Okay. Those are the only single state run manufacturer in America, meaning that we control the process all the way from sticking the cane stalk in the ground, uh -huh. all the way to bottling everything in between. We grow our own cane, mm -hmm. um, we crush it ourselves, we, we create the syrup ourselves. And I'm Chinese, but little bit is Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is where the magic happens. Okay. You know? Oh, it smells good in here. Mm -hmm. It smells beautiful. You, uh -huh. you never get used to it. The hole in there. Yeah. <laughs> so now, are these wooden barrels that they add to the the flight they, they do add to the flavor of the rum. Right. So with our rum, the, the main difference between us and a lot of rums is that it's not just the rum. The rum itself, beautiful when it comes off the still. Right. But the, the barrel plays just as much um, into the personality of the end product uh -huh. as much as the rum itself. And it basically. colors it too, doesn't it? Right, exactly. So the tannins in the wood will kind of pull from it mm -hmm. um, and then color the rum as right. well. So these are American white oak barrels. Okay. Um, we'll get them brand new out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh -huh. And so, you know, when you, when you have things like bourbon or you have um, whiskey, things of those nature, they're typically going to use a charred oak barrel as well. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what goes into our process. Right. We're putting a lot more robust flavor. Now, how many times can you use a an oak barrel. Mm -hmm. Now, you can use them multiple times. For us, though, we're only going to use it once. Really? Mm -hmm. And then I guess you have an outlet 
mm. to get rid of them and get right. Them. So, so like there's an Omaha brewery not far from here. Mm -hmm. um, they use it to kind of age some of their brew. Mm -hmm. um, so, in those scenarios, you know, we're selling to customers, things like that. First, we use them as a furniture or the like. Right. Um, but yeah, we want to we want to maintain the personality of each barrel. Right. Um, so we don't want to we don't want to dilute it. We don't want to we don't want to cheat you. Mm -hmm. you know? So. Um, each barrel, depending on um, how old the wood is, where it's taken from, what season, what sap, um, all has a different personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so these are our two stills over here. Okay. Um, and so. Now, how many gallons? Mm -hmm. So. These are 250. 250? Uh huh. And and so. The tail is going right now. Mm hmm. What do you mean? The tail. That's the end. The of tail. It. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the thumper. Is that what that is? Conversation thing. Okay, if it was, wait a minute, is it the thumper, or yes or no? Oh. No, if it come out of that and went into something else, that other thing would be a thumper. Yeah, the middle, mm -hmm. the one between the pipe and the would be a thumper. Right. But there it is there. Now what does the, what does this do? That's mentioned in the Oh, it does? Kind of letting us know um, as, it, as it gets a little bit higher each time, we kind of know what the phase is running in and out of. Mm -hmm. As it loses the, uh, as you lose alcohol potential, you're kind of getting into the last one to end it. So, uh -huh. it's still 15 hours, you lose one. Right. Now, what, 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 proof, what proof would this be? Mm -hmm. Well, this would run anywhere, depending on the phase, from anywhere from about 170 or so proof down to about 98 or so. Okay. So that? this is going to be what's running right now. Uh -huh. That's going to be those vats of that. Oh, okay. Um, so that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so. And this is an old cane press here. Right. Right. The ones you attach the mule to, you kind of go around. Yeah. Right. This is where we're going to have our fermentation. Set. Okay. So these large vats here uh -huh. are going to have a full um, vat of this, of the sugar cane syrup. Uh -huh. And so an acre of, um, of cane stock essentially is going to make this an, an acre will make that much mm -hmm. sugar cane syrup mm -hmm. and so it'll be about 500 gallons or so of water out here to the 50 gallons there mm -hmm. and we'll put it in and we'll let it kind of ferment for about you know about six to ten days usually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so as the longer it ferments does that make a difference not so much it's just that depending on each batch mm -hmm. um, the yeast inside will just need to be able to eat away at the um, eat away at the sugars uh -huh. to create those alcohol byproducts, and so usually around about ten days, it's done. Um, the bubbles will stop forming, and then you're able to put it into the stills. Huh? Now, what do you mean? This is where the magic happens. Well, of course, we make it over here. But uh -huh. As far as like bottling, uh -huh. uh, our guy Roger here will bottle them each one by hand. Oh okay. really? So this is just one, two, every single one of them. He does it by hand. Uh huh. Um, and so we have the. We usually create about forty thousand bottles in a year. Uh huh. And so he he does every single one. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what is this thing here? Mm -hmm. So this um, is where the basically you'll put the rum in, um, mm -hmm. and then you'll siphon it out, um, either when you're bottling or if you want to siphon it into one of the barrels. Just to okay. Um, so this this particular distillery, you have about 10, 10 people. How many people with this one? Only three. three. Only three here. Mm -hmm. And man, y'all make a lot of liquor. <laughs> Be three people. That's yeah. Really now y'all's rum. Mm -hmm. Where do y'all distribute it? Right now, seventeen states and twelve countries. Mm -hmm. So it really it goes to seventeen countries. Mm -hmm. Wow. That one over there good. just is going to Japan. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. So that one there is going yeah. to Japan. South Africa. Uh huh. The South African distributor is now distributing to Namibia, which is right above South Africa. Mm -hmm. And we're not in Alabama, which is 25 miles that way. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, this is where it's aged. <laughs> oh boy. So a thousand barrels. Now, how long do they stay in these barrels before you take it out and start selling well, it? Depending on the barrel, we have two different types. Uh -huh. um, it can be anywhere from sixty to ninety days, or it could be at minimum four years and goes up. Mm -hmm. um, 
kind of depends on each individual barrel. Um, mm -hmm. Depends on the flavor that's being given to us. Um, you always hear me re usually talk in ranges because yeah. you never know. Uh -huh. um, so we'll go and sometimes you'll get one of these charred barrels and it's been in there for four years. You'll taste it and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, it tastes nice. Mm -hmm. so, but I think we can go a little longer and you'll let it sit a little bit longer. And maybe it goes to year five and you take it and it tastes perfect. And so then we'll take it out, um, we'll bottle it. And then from there we have, of course, that expression. Uh, like I said, each barrel has its own personality. Mm -hmm. So every one of them ages a little bit differently. Wow. So you, you're not, you, I probably wouldn't know the difference, but I'm sure there's probably some people would say they get a taste, a different taste out of every barrel. That is true. That is true. So, what do we say? Nothing very, nothing too overt. Mm -hmm. um, but that makes all the difference. You know, you can come in here one day and you get barrel, let's say 700, right? Mm -hmm. And then you come next year and you try barrel 718. And it's the same thing, but taste it and it's like, oh, well, I get these notes from it or these notes. Mm -hmm. Still the same um, general, I guess, palette to it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you'll pick out different flavors. You may <laughs> run into a butterscotch, you may run into a caramel, but every now and then you may pick up a raisin, you may pick up an anise. Good uh, gracious. Now, now the apple, apple last week, she said she tastes the apple. So. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. And that's just because of how long it's been aged mm -hmm. exactly. and the characteristics of the wood. Exactly. Could have been what um, wood grown, like um, Chad said, or anything. The uh -huh. soil. Now, is this this builder have to maintain a certain temperature? It, it doesn't. It's just um, whatever the ambient temperature is outside. That's what we have. Yeah. So, so during the summer, it could be kind of hot in here. Well, it'll hold the cold. This temperature will last up until probably April. Wow. It'll hold the cold temperature for that long. These buildings were built in like 1901. Mm-hmm. What is that? That's just impressive looking, whatever it is. <laughs> that is a safe. That's we a safe. Up under the floor. Uh -huh. we got to this was a wooden floor here. Right? Uh -huh. It used to be a jewelry store. Uh -huh. So we just assumed that the safe fell through the floor. They couldn't hoist it back up back in the day, so they just covered it up. Uh -huh. We got ready to pour the concrete for the building. Uh -huh. We found a safe up under the floor. Yeah, it's got the secret recipe. That's yeah. it right there. That's one of the original bottles right there. Is it really? Yeah. Do you have a taster that will come and taste it and they'll decide, oh, we need to put this in a jar. That's Y'all do that. You know, someone has to do the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> we got pretty good at right now. Good. So at the end of the day, when you go home, how was your dad work? Oh, pretty good. <laughs> this was used to make cognac in France. This steel was used to make cognac in France? Yes, sir. Now, how'd y'all wind up with it? Well, actually, um, the founder, Eric, he had a friend that had it in a garage. So now, what happens here? This is rum barrel aged coffee right here. Rum barrel aged coffee. Now, does it taste like rum? You, you get hints of it, but not, it's not strong. It's a good coffee. Uh -huh. Like what we did, take some green beans. The beans come from Peru. But, yeah. Um, via, um, America's Georgia. Yeah. The green beans. We had the rum. We hydrated with the um, original rum that we have. Uh-huh. Um, rotate them for about three weeks. Like we have actually. Uh -huh. We can spin the barrels and get that rum essence in the coffee. Uh-huh. And then we get them roasted. Really? Well, this is the original rum right here. And this is what the beans are hydrated with right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So do y'all do events here? We do. Um, the last one that we had was a cigar pairing. Uh -huh. That was about two months ago. Yeah. But if someone wants to use it during business hours, they're more than welcome. Mm -hmm. After business hours, it is a slight charge for somebody staying late, but it's free normally mm -hmm. through, during, during the business hours. So I imagine that somebody could book a tasting party here. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Now, what kind of price range for bottles of rum? For the 750 sizes, anywhere from 49 to 120. Oh, really? Yes, sir. I s okay, guys, I hope you have enjoyed our tour of the Richland Rum Distillery. And it was awesome. I learned so much here. You need to come by and check this place out. And I'm sure you will not be sorry you did. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big old thumbs up. Be sure to tell your family and friends, and until next time, y'all have a good day. <laughs>